So I'm really here to self-develop and self-realize through my work mm. and my partnerships and my alliances are the way through. These disastrous relationships were just sort of the pin in the in the balloon of my daydreaming and my fantasy and my you know my own uh, family history. Those relationships were there to burst those fantasies and daydreams so that I could come into a reality about myself in this life in relationship to myself. Mm. And I know now at my ripe tender age that um, I'm not here to be a wife to anybody or a mother. Mm -hmm. I can be a partner, a uh, I'm probably not even capable of being a lover because what I require for myself is autonomy, respect, you know, space, um, conversation. There's so much more that I require past, um, beyond the, the, the first flush of love and falling in love and he's so cute and all of that crap. I had to get my ass wiped across the concrete to get to some place that really reflects my personal needs as a as a woman, mm -hmm. and what a, I'm in a perfect time to be in, on, on the planet because we're as you've said before, you know, we're doing this work right now. Greetings, I am Monique Ruffin. Welcome to Forget Everything You Think You Know. We are at the Libra Full Moon episode, and I am very excited today because I have an incredible guest. But before I bring my incredible guest in, I want to talk a little bit about the Libra Full Moon and this energy that we're going to be working with for the next you know, few days or so. The Libra full moon is the energy that rules our relationships, our partnerships with others. Oftentimes in conventional astrology, they'll say it's our relationship with other people, but also marriage, love relationships, but it's also business partnerships. It's how we connect to one other person. It's how we show up in relationships. I personally see Libra as the place where the mirror comes into being. So the people in our lives often mirror some aspect of us. And in Libra, they might be reflecting the part of ourselves that we don't see, the part of ourselves that we are not necessarily privy to. We will draw someone into our lives to help us see the aspects of ourselves that might not be available to us to sort of recognize in our lives. So with the Libra full moon, many of us might be experiencing shifts in our relationships. We might be looking at how we're showing up in partnerships, relationships that are codependent, relationships that have um, karmic debt inside of them, karmic um, trauma, things that we learned in our parent, learned with our parents and our families, relationship patterns, that maybe we've been stuck in that need to be adjusted now at this time in our lives. I know I have for the last couple of years been doing a lot of work on my romantic relationships around how I'm showing up sexually. And for many of you who might be following me or be a part of the conversation that I've been having in social media um, about like how we attract partners that reflect to us our trauma and our wounds. So I have been spending the last couple of years looking at my relationship with men and how I attract them based upon my relationship with my father, what I learned in my relationship with my parents and how I've carried out those patterns. And so today I'm very excited to have Judith Scott here with us because she is a friend of mine and we do a lot of talking and um, digging into our own astrology to understand our love patterns because Libra governs love as well. It's a Venetian energy. So Judith, I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for being here today. 
Absolutely. My pleasure, Monique. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I'm uh, so excited to trying to put it together. I know we we have we've had to we've had to knit this together. So I'm really appreciative mm-hmm. that we have found a way to do it. Mm-hmm. So you are someone like myself who really uses astrology to help you navigate your life. Um, would you first of all, would you just introduce yourself to the audience just a little bit, just so they can know who you are, and then let's dive into this astrological conversation. Okay. Uh, Yes, my name is Judith Scott, and I am a professional actor. You might have seen me playing Bernie Mac's wife in Guess Who, um, or um, a few episodes on Dexter. Um, I most recently appeared in uh, a show called Snowfall on, I don't know what the network is anymore, um, (laughs) FX. (laughs) And um, I did a little movie called Bad Hair, which is a, um, a, a kind of horror spoof based on a Japanese uh, horror film about a weave that kills people. <laughs> and uh, I'll be seen on um, Dear White People next year and a, a Netflix special limited series called From Scratch with Zoe Saldana. I'll be playing her mother again in this uh, next little bit of business I'm going to do. And um, yeah, that's it. That's my that's my career. Well, that sounds very exciting. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. that. I, 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 it's a beautiful thing to be able to use your life as art, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you are a Libra, yeah. yes? Yes, I am. <laughs> but, and uh, not only am I a Libra, I'm a, I'm a lot of cardinal. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Mars is in Libra. Mm. And uh, my... Uh, outer planets are mostly in um, cardinal signs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So I'm, I'm very much a Libra in, in a Libra house. My son is in the seventh house. My Mars is in the seventh house. I got a lot of Libra. So tell me what was, what led you to astrology? How long, why did you choose astrology to help you navigate your life? You know, I'm not, I can't really say that I chose astrology. I think everything that I've ever been, had an affinity for chose me. Mm -hmm. And I followed it because it was a, it was medicinal for me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I grew up in a, in a highly dysfunctional household um, that I didn't know was dysfunctional at the time. Mm -hmm. And by the time I reached 21, uh, I was just looking for answers. I was looking for any answers that could help me understand who I was, like, why did I, why was I a member of this family? Why did I feel this way? Why did I have this kind of dynamic relationship with this person and that person, this, my stepfather or my mother or my whatever. And um, astrology just showed up in my life. I can't even tell you when it happened, but I do remember beginning to read it more thoroughly than through newspapers and cartoon Mm. sheets, you know, in Mm. magazines and stuff like that. Yes, because it's, it's true. Many of us have a relationship with astrology, but a very sort of surface relationship, like my Zodiac Mm -hmm. sign. And and it's Mm -hmm. one of the things that I learned from you when you and I first met, just the depths at which you can learn about yourself through astrology Mm -hmm. sitting down in my living room and I was a novice like I I didn't know anything at the time and watching you going (gasps) like oh my gosh she's so like you really you really were able to um, translate for me things that I was living and experiencing but you could see it in the chart and and you say it and I'm like oh my god this woman really knows what she's talking about so You really Mm -hmm. got me very interested in what I'm doing now. And now I'm making a living at it. So thank you. (laughs) So I'm, I'm so proud of you for that. It's impresses me that you've, that you've taken it up in that way. And you've just really created your own fabric out of it because astrology is definitely an art. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I said to you the last time we spoke, you know, there's so many ways inside this, 
this craft. Mm -hmm. And you just have just, I don't know what the word is, but you have, you have coalesced it. You've, you've woven it together in a way that's very, very clear and, uh, and very organized. Mm -hmm. And I just love hearing you talk about it because you just, it just makes good sense. I'm kind of a little bit all over the place with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do appreciate people who have, who have a very ordered um, approach to astrology. Mm -hmm. So you, you've done remarkable. You've done an amazing job diving in. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you <laughs> because you're a teacher of mine. So I, I invited you here today because I really wanted to dive into this conversation publicly around relationship and healing love relationships you being a Libra and having a lot of cardinal signs. I have Venus and Mercury and a Libra and Venus and Mercury in Libra, meaning my heart and my mind and my Southern node. And so I want to really help the audience, the listeners learn how they can look at their relationships and see how astrology can help them learn to have healthy relationships or healthier or heal traumatic patterns. And so I just wanted to, I wanted you to share, like, how do you use astrology to dive into your relationship patterns, your trauma around relationships, and then begin to make new choices how have you done that you know it's it that's a that's a really good question because I, I i read a lot of astrologers i have many 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 books on astrology uh i have been looking at charts for probably close to let's say 40 years um beginning with my own and then i got into uh, lots of disastrous relationships um through my uh very deceptive eighth house uh, Neptune conjunct Mercury and Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So I was running around with a kind of externalized screen that I projected upon pretty much everybody and m mostly men. And um, one of the things that I learned as I got older was that I was essentially always looking, I was always dating my mom, mm -hmm. some aspect of my mother. She was there and not there. She was there and not there. Um, but, but the thing that I pay most attention to in my chart and in other people's chart, because I actually think these things play out more than our sun signs mm -hmm. is I pay a lot of attention to the asteroids and I pay a lot of attention to Chiron. Mm -hmm. I think Chiron plays a big, huge part in people's lives and in their relationships. Uh, and they eventually will show up if they don't show up immediately. Um, so I've met people who are, you know, a Taurus and an Aquarius. And I go, oh my God, will you let me do your chart? Because I can't, I have no idea how a Taurus and an Aquarius are in a, in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'll get the chart and I look, look, you know, look up the compatibility and I look up the synastry, the connection between the two charts. And it turns out that they've got all this Chiron energy, all of this, you know, Chiron on the moon or Venus on Chiron or, you know, their Chirons are trying or trying each other or something. So suddenly you see that what is operating in the relationship is actually a healing dynamic. Yeah. Not And the love is what comes out of the healing. It isn't something that we go, oh, he's a, Tor he's a Leo and I'm an Aries. And so we're just going to love each other. Mm -hmm. that, that isn't really what plays out in my experience in mm -hmm. astrology charts. Mm -hmm. What plays out is people are in relationships to work something out, whether they're aware of it or not. Hopefully they're aware of it. Mm -hmm. And I can speak to that only because I have had so many relationships as I said, that just ended in fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what I got out of every one of them was pushed back on my own heels and looking at my own self. Mm -hmm. And what I needed most in my life was to develop myself. And I'm not here, even as a Libra in the seventh house, 
I'm not really technically here to develop myself inside of an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. In fact, my Libra planets are really tied up with my career. So I'm really here to self-develop and self-realize through my work. Mm. And my partnerships and my alliances are the way through. These disastrous relationships were just sort of the pin in the in the balloon of my daydreaming and my fantasy and my, you know, my own uh, family history. Those relationships were there to burst those fantasies and daydreams so that I could come into a reality about myself and this life in relationship to myself. Mm. And I know now at my ripe tender age mm. that, um, I'm not here to be a wife to anybody or a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can be a partner. Uh, I'm probably not even capable of being a lover because what I require for myself is autonomy, respect, you know, space, um, conversation. There's so much more that I require past, um, beyond the 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 first flush of love and falling in love and he's so cute and all of that crap i had to get my ass wiped across the concrete to get to some place that really reflects my personal needs as a as a woman mm -hmm. and what a, i'm in a perfect time to be in, on, on the planet because we're as you've said before you know we're doing this work right now Mm -hmm. In the flesh right now, women are doing that work. They're not seeking themselves through other people, through their children, mostly. Yes. Most people are trying to seek some kind of self-realization. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's the nickel tour. Yes, that is, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that you realize through studying your chart that you're not here to be somebody's wife and somebody's mother mm -hmm. because in our generation so I also have a ripe old age a ripe age as well like I'm a grown-up and I for years had a lot of fantasies you and I have a similar chart we both have mm -hmm. a flat chart in that eighth house um Neptune fantasies of love like I'm going to be swept off my feet and, and all of these projections that would end up in me sinking to the bottom of the ocean, wishing that I could like that, believing that I was never going to be able to live with somebody. That's how it, for me, it's like, I'm not going to be able to live. And just the astrology helped me realize like you, that, I'm running these patterns of unrequited love because of my relationship with my parents. Yes. yes. And, and I, like you, realize like my mother never gave me the love that I really yearned for. So I was seeking it in everyone else. And it wasn't until I started to realize that I, I could give myself what I need, or I could seek it out in ways that didn't trigger the wound, which is abandonment, um, you know, scarcity, manipulation, like all the things that I would see myself doing to try to get love. Yeah. Um, and the astrology yeah. helped me see that. Yeah, I, I actually... I, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't rush so close. I wouldn't rush so quickly to the astrology. For me, I really had to be dragged across concrete. I mean, I had to have very difficult experiences. And by difficult, meaning they absolutely blasted my ideas about what a relationship, they just absolutely shredded those ideas. Mm -hmm. And when those ideas were being shredded, I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I went to astrology to look at what was I thinking? What was I doing? How was I behaving? Mm -hmm. What am I desirous of? I have a Venus conjunct Pluto. Mm -hmm. So, and a moon square Pluto. Mm -hmm. So not only was I seeking 
idealism and intensity, like just constant intensity, which is unsustainable in a relationship, in a human relationship. I was seeking something that was so beyond, it was so grandiose and, and, and out of this world that I had to be brought back down to the earth and it was not comfortable was always very, very difficult and uncomfortable. But there was a point, I would say probably in the early to mid nineties, where I really started feeling what the wound of Chiron was for. For me, it felt like death. Mm -hmm. But I, what I was learning was the death wasn't me, literally. It wasn't a physical death. It was a death of a bunch of as you said, patterns, but they were ideas that had been implanted in me that I had had been imprinted in me by my witnessing my mother's dramatic uh, behavior around relationships. Mm -hmm. It was imprinted upon me by the, the, the whispering of, of, you know, my grandfather's cheating and all the cheating that the men did in the family and all what the women witnessed. And, you know, it was all of that stuff was in the zeitgeist. It was always around me. And so I, it was like a little, it was like, it was like a gallon of cheating and lying and a gallon of, I'm never going to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to attract that. Mm-hmm. So you mix these two idea like this idea that I'm never gonna I'm gonna have this perfect thing and I'm gonna you know with with this tragic history in my family going back God only knows how many generations but I can track it back at least four. Wow. I mean literally four generations. I know what those people were doing, yeah. you know, yeah. concubines and girlfriends and extra side chicks and babies and 14 kids here and nine there and seven, you know, that's, that's a lot to come through to think that you're going to come to this point and clear it all up because you're just going to find the right guy and do the right thing. But what I learned as I got older is that I never knew anything. And in fact, those people didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I never knew. Mm -hmm. And astrology helped me show me that what I was capable of was self-education. I was capable of stopping and praying. I was, I was capable of resting in self-care. That's what my chart showed me. These are all your talents. Mm-hmm. So when shit hits the fan, reach for your talents and develop those. So mm-hmm. the more the shit hit the fan, the more I'd reach for my talents. And by that, I mean, you know, Venus conjunct Pluto in, in, in Virgo. Oh, deep self-care, health food, you know what I mean? Like yoga and meditate, all that stuff. So I was reaching for my talents. And at some point I sort of turned a corner where the talents became more important than a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And then I began to meet myself in my chart. Then I had a relationship with myself mm-hmm and a total understanding that there could never be anybody on the outside of my life to help me to, to connect those dots and to help me develop those parts of myself. There's no way, there's no way, not for me. I don't know what it's like for other people, but not for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I relate to that. It's such an interesting thing when to have the Libra placements, And then to discover that your life is not going to be about partnership. Mm -hmm. That's right. So how do you, like, how did you come to peace with that? I know when I got it, I was really heartbroken for a little while, actually. (laughs) There's something that, that operates in me. I think it's the Pluto square, the moon. And it says something to the effect that we're not the walking wounded. When we walk through shit, we walk through it, we're over it, we don't look back. Mm -hmm. And that's very much a part of my nature. I'm not sentimental. I don't have a lot of mourning and grief. You know, Mm -hmm. I had a lot of that, but I was carrying that for other people in my family. Mm -hmm. And once I realized I was carrying those things, that unresolved grief and the resentments around relationship, my grandmother's resentment towards my grandfather and, you know, all of that stuff. I suddenly came to the realization that I needed to accept what is 
or I was just going to be miserable because I was going to be playing one thing while the real thing was happening. Mm. And if I didn't get real, I would just stay in a fantasy for the rest of my life. And, and a lot of that came through getting older and then watching my mother in fantasy. Her whole life was a fantasy. Wow. Who she was going to be, what she's done. I could see that she was, she would go through these horrible things and she would do what's called a geographic, which would be to move, mm -hmm. get a new career, a new boyfriend and retell that story. Mm. But there was never any dealing with what had happened so that there could be something concrete to take into the next iteration of her life. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was dying and being reborn, but she was dying and being reborn how she wanted to be reborn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I got to witness that mercifully um, up until she died. And it taught me so much about my own thinking. I mean, if I never knew anything and she never knew anything, I could only have learned what I know from her and she didn't know shit. So I had to get really sober and real about myself and the way my mind works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just accept it. Yes. Oh, that's and when, when I, and I have to say this, mm -hmm. when I accepted it, I had so much relief because I didn't have to do anything anymore. I didn't have to worry about what I look like. I don't have to chase beauty. I, you know what I mean? I don't have to be pleasing. I don't have to worry about male gaze. Yeah, I do yeah. everything for myself now and I do it because it pleases me. And if it pleases somebody else, that's cool. But now I'm very wary about how people are coming into my world because are you here because you like me? Or you just like the feathers, the colors and the trinkets and the, you know, yeah, and the hair. One of the things that you said that I really want to talk more about is that carrying the patterns like from your mother and your grandmother for generations to be able to recognize that four generations of trauma, of choices, of resentments, of unresolved issues are then showing up in your life. Mm -hmm. That's, I feel like that is so significant in the work that I do and really helping people see, my clients see that you're playing out your mother's trauma or your father's trauma. You're, yes, you're 40 years old, but you're still playing out the fact that you didn't know your father whether you think it or not. Can you tell, talk a little bit about how the astrology helped you see that? Or how did you come to see it? I had a sudden, sudden realization about a month ago where things started popping for me in a way that it was absolutely clear that my life here is not about my career. It's not about relationship. It's not about marriage. It's not about the things that I own or the places. It has nothing to do with that. I'm here for soul development. Mm -hmm. Suddenly hit me. I have this Libra sun in the seventh house of partnership, which squares my ascendant in Aries. Mm -hmm. It squares my midheaven and it squares my fourth house. Mm -hmm. So here's this Libra sun that only wants to relate and every corner she's looking into, she's up against something that says, no, I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, not interested in what? Because I don't know what you're not interested in. Because I'm not reflecting. I'm not self-reflecting. I'm looking for you. Mm. I'm looking for career. I'm looking for the dynamism of the Aries ascendant. You know, I'm looking for the, the mother or the home life. Mm -hmm. And none of, and I was squaring all three of those mm -hmm. places in the chart, the midheaven, the ascendant, and the IC. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that a month ago that I've literally been here my whole life to develop my identity, mm -hmm. to develop this Libra sun. What are your values? Mm -hmm. What do you love? What can you stand up and fight for? What are you willing to walk away from? You know, what do you find intolerable? What won't you sit down and, and listen? You know, like all of that stuff, if that makes any sense. And um, a large part of 
me becoming a grown up was to accept things the way that they are, mm-hmm. to live life on life's terms. Uh, because the more time I spent fighting it, fighting those life's terms, the more I actually suffered terribly. Mm-hmm. And was subject to all of the mental illnesses that came before me through the women. You know, my grandmother, my step-grandmother, she watched soap operas. Mm-hmm. And I realized that's where she learned about relationships. My grandfather learned about being a man by watching Westerns. He had no, these people had no idea. Mm-hmm. And I learned about being a woman through the pornography that was splayed out in my stepfather's den mm-hmm. in the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. So I never had a, there was never any real model of, of relating to a man or relationship, solving problems, apologizing, you know, um, saying, can I help you or will you help me? There was none of that. So once I could see what my schooling had been, I realized I, I had an idea. And the only way I can start over is to say, I'm willing to the only way. I'm never going to find it in a relationship. It's too easy for me to start the whole movie. Yes, to start the projection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I uh, I I have to I have to stay in a constant state of awareness and consciousness about myself, or it just man it just goes off the rails. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that mm-hmm. because. Um, one of my talents is my imagination. Yes. So now that you have a really clear understanding of who you are and you've been studying or looking at your chart or other people's charts for 40 years, Mm -hmm. how are you able to now manage your energy, manage your relating? Like, how how do you not suffer anymore around it? Or um, how are you able to repurpose the energy is what I want to say. Repurpose the energy that you were using to project fantasies. Like how do you now use your energy in a way that is that in a way that serves you, that doesn't create suffering? Um, I would say that a lot of that redirected energy is in the form, comes in the form of taking care of myself, Mm -hmm. taking care of my bills, taking care of my home, you know, Um, being responsible for myself, my emotional life, um, my creativity, and not to sublimate any of that into another human being. One of the things that really struck me when my, the day we buried my grandfather, my mother's father, my grandmother, who I didn't know very well because we didn't go around them very often. She was my step grandmother. I was in the kitchen with her alone, which wasn't common. And she said, I wish I had done something with my life. And that told me everything about her. I didn't need to know anything more about her than that. Wow. And I've had those moments in a lot of different ways where people said these amazingly powerful, potent things. And I somewhere, somehow knew that was for me. And I grew up with a very frustrated mother who, who got pregnant at 20, had me at 21. And really her whole dream was to be an artist and a musician. And, you know, and she wanted to do all the things that I did. Mm -hmm. And when I got older, she said that she said, you know what, Judy, you've become the woman I've always wanted to be. So, these are the guideposts mm-hmm. of 
femininity, of womanhood, those are the two goalposts mm -hmm. through which I had to like kind of course correct and bring myself back to, I mean, get, be allowed to let the universe bring me back to earth so I could actually have a real life that belonged to me so that I could see what it might look like to be in partnership with somebody that wasn't enmeshment or codependence or addiction or any of those other things. Cause that's all I ever knew. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know much about my autonomy in that in, in relationship, mm -hmm. but I'm really, really okay with being alone by myself. I have lots to do. I'm interested in myself. The world is just showing up saying like, you want to do this? How about this? You want to try that? Mm -hmm. um, and I know from the work I've been doing and what I know about my moon and my Venus and my Chiron, that if somebody comes in too close, I'm going to get suffocated and I'm going to need you to get out of my space. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I thought all that shit was love. Yes. I thought that was love being suffocated, being consumed, mm -hmm. merging all that shit. I thought that was love, right. but it was not. Mm. It's, it's a, uh, it's vampirism. Mm -hmm. What an incredible thing. One of the things that I have discovered as we're going through this, what I consider a cosmic shift happening right now as we move into the age of Aquarius, that I feel like I'm witnessing myself and many other women really having a conversation like the one you're having, where we're realizing that we need to come to earth inside of ourselves, that we need to really prioritize our own development. Mm -hmm. It seems as if the generation that I come from, we were conditioned to be wives and mothers. And though that seems like it's been blown out of the water for the younger generation, like the 20 year olds that I encounter and work with on a regular basis that is not what they're talking about but it took me to get 47 before I was like wait a minute <laughs> you are responsible for yourself I was um the thing that occurred for me was I was dating a man who was a very successful attorney and we had just gone on a couple of dates and um, he lived in another city and I was wanting to go visit him. And he was like, he was like, I'm not really sure if I want to do a long distance relationship, which I understood. We were like, well, let's see. And then I didn't have the money to buy an airline ticket to go visit him. I didn't have my own money. I was 47 years old. And I, I remember thinking, you don't, you're dating someone who's successful and you can't pay for an airline ticket. That's a problem. You are out of alignment. And I remember telling one of my girlfriends and she was like, well, why doesn't he buy the ticket? I was like, isn't that horrible that that's, that's the mindset? I'm 47 years old. And I'm thinking, why doesn't he, why can't I? I was, and I literally ended, that was it. I was like, it's done. And I'm going to get busy building my own self up yeah, yeah. through work that I care about. Yes. I'm a six house Virgo. So I need work that matters. Uh, otherwise, I don't feel good at all. Like relationships will bore me after a while because I need to be doing work that, that right. makes me feel good and valuable and of service. So this, this, there's a new paradigm that I see emerging of many women who are now starting to look at their own value and, and see that their value is not based upon their partners. It's not based upon being a mother. It's based upon the choices and the way you create your own life. 
Um, and I just am very inspired by that. And in hearing you talk about it and hearing how you have moved through the energy of your family and, and taken those lessons very seriously um, and personally is very inspiring. One thing I read many years ago, I think I was in my very early 20s or late teens. I don't remember the name of the book. It was a big popular book at the time about women and mothers and daughters. And there was a piece I read in there that said something like, one of the biggest lies that a woman tells her children is that she's available to them always. And that that sentence said everything about my mom. It was a lie. She wasn't available. Mm. And I felt her in it, her unavailability. You know, I felt her chomping at the bit and wanting to go off and have her life and do her career. So she did. When we, when I got into my twenties, my mom packed, I don't even remember the moment it happened. She packed her shit up and she went off to Europe for 15 years. She went to school. She got a master's at 55. She rode camels and helicopters and she learned to ski and swim. And she went to Russia and, you know, Prague. And she had her life. Mm. At the time, it pissed me off. It hurt me deeply. I thought she'd abandoned us. But I'm now past that age that she did that thing. And I realized that my mother was really working to get to have a life. Mm -hmm. She wanted a life. Mm -hmm. And getting to know her as she was dying, I, I came to understand that her biggest wound was around mothering. She, she always thought she was a bad mother and she thought we thought she was a bad mother. Was she, could she have done some things differently? I would have liked those, those things to have been done differently, a lot of things to be done differently. But in the end, everything that did happen brought me to this moment. And I really thank her for... I'll tell you this, I had a TCM and she, a traditional Chinese medicine woman. And as my mom was dying, she said, you need to remember, she said, you, you need to remember and always celebrate that you came here for your freedom. Mm. And she said, and when your mother dies, she's going to leave you gifts. They'll be in your arms. They're going to be little packages. And she said, you can pick the ones you want and take the other ones and put them on the ground. And the next day after my mom died, I was sitting on the floor crying and I realized what my TCM meant, because I didn't ask her, what do you mean? Like jewelry, money? What she meant was states of mind. You can put down depression, you can put down anxiety, you can put down fear, and I can keep sense of adventure, I can keep wits, I can keep, you know, I can keep intelligence, uh, moxie, you know, um, I don't know if that comes with age. Uh, I don't know if it's something I, I would have been able to appreciate about her as a woman, uh, as a mother. Um, but I know, I know my mother was struggling to keep food on our table and she was struggling never to go on welfare. She had um, ethics for herself, you know, and for her family. So, and she was a Libra and my father was a Libra. And I am a 14 degree, I'm the fulcrum. I am 14 degree separation from both of them. I'm their firstborn. So I came here with a karmic relationship with these two Libras and they both had tremendous wounds, which they shared with me that I have spent a pretty much a large part of my life sifting through and saying, that's not mine. I'm going to put that down. And I'm going to hold up these gifts. And I feel like, I really feel like I'm living my chart now. Mm. What a gift. I'm a hard worker. I have great imagination. I have creativity. I love my freedom. You know, I love my imagination. Um, I am responsible for myself. I feel like I'm actually living my whole chart now. And I can zoom, zoom up into the 10th house and zoom back into the seventh and go into the Aries rising. You know, Aries is what saves my, my bacon. Aries says, that's bullshit. Not doing that. I'll be heading this way. You know, Aries is my warrior. So I have a partner. I have an intermarriage. Mm -hmm. I make a home. I have a beautiful home. So I, I have a relationship with that mothering thing down there in the 
fourth house. Do you see? So for me, the chart in, in its infancy had difficulties, but those difficulties and those struggles, those squares, all were creating the tension to pull me back to the Libra to find out what my values were. What do you need? What do you want? How do you want to be? What kind of a woman do you want to be? And then finding those inner relationships with the career and the warrior and the mother and all of that stuff. Wow. Thank you so much for really showing how the chart and the life are, they're almost synonymous, but that there it's a journey. Like the chart tells a story. Yes. You get to live into it. And I want our listeners to be inspired that if they are having challenges in any area of their lives, right? That they can begin to look through their family to see if it's sort of karmic, if it's if it's something that likely most of our stuff is coming through some sort of um, relationship to both of our parents. Yes. It's, it's always the case. And then how to understand the pattern so that you can transform them and really begin to live into your life and have a f- have fulfillment. The thing that I'm most aware of and grateful for, like I was just saying that I, I hear you, um, I hear you standing in your sovereignty as mm. a, and that is rare for <laughs> <laughs> we have been told and conditioned into being mothers and wives and yearning and and giving our energy away allowing ourselves to be vampired allowing ourselves to be because we're we are convinced that we're not enough in and of ourselves to always be available yes exactly and so we have turned that over. So thank you so much for bringing that, that wisdom to us today so that we can see that it's possible and that you can be happy and fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Single mm-hmm. and sexy. Like First of all, you guys, if you don't know Judith, go look at her. She's gorgeous. She's a gorgeous, beautiful woman. So I just am grateful to have you here today to share about your journey and your wisdom and your healing. God bless your mother and those four generations of women. Yes. Who did all that so that you could be here to learn these lessons. That's right. That is absolutely right. They paved the way and I just cut down the bramble and cleared it a little bit more. And I got a niece who's coming up behind me and she's 21 and she's getting this stuff at 21. And I keep saying to her, you have no idea how ahead of the game you are. You have no idea the work these other women did. So you can stand right here and sob and say, I don't know. Great. You're 21. You're not whatever saying, I don't know. You know what I mean? Absolutely. No, it's an extraordinary time. It really is. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful to call your friend and a sister. And, um, if there's anything, what like if you could say again what you have coming up where people can find you, and I encourage you all to go check out Judith because she's brilliant, and I am I'm just grateful to have you. So where can they find you? Thank you, Monique. Well, you can't find me anywhere right now because I'm radio silent on the old on ye old internet, uh, but I am working on a, putting up a website by the end of the um, fall. And I will be in a movie called From Scratch by Tembi Locke, which stars Zoe Saldana. And it's, it's, I think it's going to be a really beautiful project when, it's, when we're done. And um, I'll be on the last uh, season of, of uh, Dear White People. And if you haven't watched uh, The Little Things, I have a moment with uh, Mr. Denzel Washington in that movie, which just was released uh, earlier this month. So awesome. I'm going to mm. put that out a little thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for having me, Monique. I'm so grateful to have you back in my life and to awesome. know you're ciphering in this way. I appreciate it. I feel the exact same. So have a great <laughs> and happy full moon in Libra. 
Yes, thank you, beloved. Thank you. Peace and blessings, everyone. I am Monique, also known as the Moon Mama. Forget everything you think you know. Bye bye. Then who am I? I? Who am I? I? And I wish that you knew you. Sleep in the bed with both your shoes.